You've probably used VPNs before. Maybe you have VPN software installed on a computer at home and you use it to connect to your office. What we're doing with this is building a tunnel through a network. This is like a bypass tunnel under a city. We get through the city, but we're not bothered by any of the traffic lights. GRE, or Generic Routing Encapsulation, is a type of VPN. Unlike the VPN that connects your computer to the office, a GRE tunnel connects one part of the network to another part of the network. Before getting too deep into the mechanics of GRE, let's consider where they're used. The obvious reason to use GRE is to build a tunnel across the internet. This is useful if you have branch offices and want to connect to your main site. A GRE tunnel is going to cost far less than putting in dedicated WAN lines. But that's just one way to use GRE. There are some other possibilities that you may not have thought of. You may have a few network islands that need to be brought together. There are a few reasons this could happen. If you're running RIP as your routing protocol, hop count is your metric. Building a tunnel between the islands creates a virtual link, lowering the hop count. You could also leave RIP in the middle of your network and run OSPF between your islands. Or maybe you're migrating to IPv6. The core of your network may still be IPv4 and you have IPv6 islands. GRE can carry the IPv6 traffic over the IPv4 core. We can take this a step further and extend it to the WAN. While it's getting rare, it is still possible to find some WAN types out there that don't support multicast. Well, good news, GRE tunnels do. Now you don't have to go and change your WAN type if you want to add multicast traffic. This in turn adds support for dynamic routing. You usually need multicast for hollow packets, and not all VPNs allow this, so GRE has an advantage. And lastly, we have an unusual case. You may use GRE with a DDoS scrubbing provider. You sign up with a provider and build a GRE tunnel with them. All your incoming internet traffic goes to them first. They remove anything malicious and send the rest to you over the GRE tunnel. Now it's time to see how GRE tunnels actually work. We have a scenario here with two edge routers and two WAN routers. We manage the edges, but we have no control over the WAN. They're managed by a service provider. But we want to run OSPF between our edge routers, and for that we need them to be directly connected. The workaround is to create a tunnel between them. Our routers each have an interface connected to the WAN network. They can route packets through the WAN to each other. GRE tunnels use a virtual tunnel interface or VTI. Tunnel interfaces are much like regular interfaces. This includes setting the IP address and mask. We also need to set the source and destination of the tunnel. These are the IPs that we're going to use in our WAN network. That's the minimum we need to get the tunnel running. The tunnel interface is much like any other interface, so now it looks like the routers are directly connected. We could now easily configure OSPF and the neighbors would come up. So now, when traffic arrives at the router, it is passed across the tunnel. The core network is transparent to this traffic. What do I mean by this? Well, if you ran a trace route, each of these edge routers would appear, but the routers in the middle will not. The network that we're tunneling across is called the underlay network. The tunnel is built on top of the underlay and therefore is called the overlay network. This is because the traffic is encapsulated when it is passed through the tunnel. This means that extra headers are added to each tunneled packet. Firstly, a GRE header is added. This includes information to describe the traffic that's being carried through the tunnel. The most important piece of information in the GRE header is the protocol used for the original packet. For example, this could be IPv4 or IPv6. It may also include some optional information, like an authentication key and a checksum. An extra IP header is now added. Notice that there are now two IP headers. The inner header is the original header that was there before the encapsulation started. The outer header is used to transport the packet across the underlay. This uses the router's real IP address for the source and destination. The encapsulated traffic is forwarded across the underlay network just like any other packet. The original packet is not changed as it's passed around. 
When the packet arrives at the destination router, the headers are removed, leaving the original untouched packet. This can now be delivered to its ultimate destination just like it normally would be. These extra headers change the size of the packet. A standard Ethernet link will have an MTU of 1500. The extra headers are 24 bytes long, so a large packet will go over the 1500 byte limit and will be fragmented or dropped. The solution, therefore, is to lower the MTU to 1436, so the packet's payload plus the extra headers will not go over 1500 bytes. We should adjust the MSS too. In the case of IPv4, this should be 40 bytes lower than the MTU. To lock this into our brains, let's run through a quick packet walk. The computer here on the left wants to send a packet to the computer on the right. It starts by sending the packet to its default gateway. The router looks at its routing table and sees that the next hop is at the other end of the tunnel. The router now adds the GRE header. This says that IPv4 is the original protocol type. There's no authentication keys or anything fancy in our example. Next, the outer IP header is added. The IP of the router's physical interface is the source, and the IP of the destination router's physical interface is the destination IP. The encapsulated packet is then sent across the underlay. Each router makes forwarding decisions like it would for any other packet. Eventually, the packet arrives at the other end of the tunnel. The router sees that the destination IP matches itself, and determines that this is a GRE packet. It can now decapsulate the packet by removing the IP and GRE headers. The original packet is left, which can now be forwarded to the workstation. So we have a tunnel that we can route traffic over. But there's a catch. GRE tunnels are not encrypted by default. That's a serious concern if you're building a tunnel over the internet. We can add encryption using IPsec, which is exactly what we're going to do in the next video. So, if you've liked this video, please let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing, and I'll see you soon.